Welcome back to Let's Play Master of Orion 2, episode 25. The year is starting, 3,525.3. This is the 253rd turn of this game. It has been a bloodbath. There were eight civilizations, now there's only three. I betrayed and, well, I should say I attacked unprovoked the Slaw, the Mershons, the Bullrathi, all at different periods. Um, I was just considering how the Bullrathi sent a colony ship to my homeworld of Seoul and I destroyed it, thus starting the long antagonistic relationship I had with the Bullrathis. Uh, we did have peace, and then they attacked me, and then I counter-invaded, came to control Ursa. Um, I liberated a planet on Altair, but then gave it away to the Altarians, and now it's just a Mentar planet. Great. Uh, but that allowed me a, a toehold to capture Slaw. Furious. Alright, so the future is clear. It is a Cylon human venture. The Altarians are on the way out. How much territory should I grab before they are extinct is the question. Do I attack now? Is it imperative? Are they currently at war? They are not at war, so I don't feel a great deal of pressure to move in and capture the remaining Altarian territory. I can't believe how quickly the Trillarians fell. At one point, the Trillarians were very much on equal footing with the Cylons, but I suppose their technology just did not keep up with Cylon tech. Alright, I've had peace and alliance. I've had this sort of relationship with the Cylons the whole game. Um, at one point I was worried though, because they were also allied with the Mershon, and the Mershon were actively at war with me. So, I was very grateful to break the alliance between the Cylons and the Mershon. Uh, but that has allowed the Cylons to remain my allies indefinitely. All right, time for plant construction. We're gonna cash in all those asteroid belts. So we've had peace for so long, and the personality traits of the Cylons are to be honorable. So I don't expect a sneak attack, yet it seems like a sneak attack is inevitable because one of us must win. Are they going to continue to tarry on indefinitely? As if we weren't playing this game to win it? I doubt that. So I think one day the Cylons are going to attack me. They're probably going to feel like they have a significant strategic advantage when they do so. They might already have a significant strategic advantage considering their technology is pretty superior to mine, I think, in most ways. Um, I've been investing a lot in science, but the Cylons just always have everything. Ooh, one settler arrived at Jabbar Prime. That's probably the, uh, the lizard man I sent. And he helps expand the population up to 10. It was 6, now it's 10. I hope one day to also capture the, the remaining survivors of the Trillarian Empire. Um, if there are any Trillarians that left it in the universe, um, I would like to transplant them onto my worlds because they're aquatic and I think they can live in some of my oceans, thus giving me another population bonus. Um, I was pretty disappointed when Jabbar was completely annihilated in that regard because I had hoped to capture some Trillarians. Of course, I only moved to Jabbar when I realized the solar system was completely abandoned. Alright, that guy had transformation on the way. Tense present. Look at all these battleships. Right, they have ten battleships. I have some destroyers. Two battleships. Two battleships, two battleships, one battleship. So I have like seven, seven battleships. I'm not sure how many other fleets are at large in the universe. Now, Kari have no chance against the Cylons, so when that invasion happens, I need to be poised to grab territory. Alright, so this armada, in fact, I'm gonna 
put the transport, the soldiers, the marines, I'm going to move them to Slaw so they'll be closer to Molban and Gonstol so I can move in and swiftly conquer those if need be. Alright, planet construction. So this will allow me to build even more population producing uh, planets. Alright, we seriously need some shields. This is embarrassing. Um, I think a lightning field is better to turn it to missiles. Right, they finished the supercomputer at Ferias. One thing I wanted to do is I want to conquer Orion before the other race, before the Cylons do, because eventually the Cylons will have a navy capable of taking down the, uh, the Guardian at Orion. I want to do it first. So let's consider here. Consider Slaw. Slaw has my most industrious population capable of trimming out battleships at a good clip. Wow, okay, so now my Merculite missiles can Merv. That's a huge landscape changer. I think this enables me to build the very cheap frigate ships that will allow me to launch missiles in a huge abundance. And with said huge uh, missile abundance, I should be able to take down... Well, um, okay, missiles against the Guardian of Orion, um, they're not a guarantee. The Guardian has a lightning shield. So if I go in there thinking my Merculite missiles are going to take it down, um, I would need like 40 frigates, and I don't think I have a navy capable of supporting 40 frigates. Let me look further into my weapon systems and see what options I might have. Wow, so this is a very cheap ship, Spitfire, only carries a Mercurite missile, doesn't even have battle pods. Does it even need a computer? Let's just take the computer away. And I did that to make it cheaper, since it's only carrying Mercurite missiles. Let's see here, Spitfire. Can turn these out one, Spitfire turn. see here. I'm going to hold off. Uh, let me finish my build out. I've been really developing a lot of my s planets. Um, maybe it's not yet time to challenge the Guardian and Orion. This lightning field, when I equip my ships with them, 50% chance of destroying missiles before they hit the ship. So, alright, so 50% chance means I could field a lot of missiles and possibly take down the Guardian of Orion with those missiles. Um, hmm. Is it worth attempting? Let's see here. I'm suddenly losing money. I think it's because my huge navy, but I'm getting money from every other civilization, so maybe it's time to set some taxes. All right. One thing I need to do is 
build enough star bases and battle stations. I've conquered all these worlds, I've destroyed their star bases, they don't have new star bases to replace them, so they don't generate any command points. For example, this one will take 31 turns. Let's go ahead and get started. Not a star base. Terraform. I'll do auto lab, terraforming, then battle station, spaceport, enrichment, ground batteries, marine barracks. All right. I'm going to send a man of slaw to Jabbar, to the newly colonized Jabbar. Who says you consider? Are there slaw men on this planet? There are. Good. Slaw on fucked. Wait, there is here on this planet. Let's transfer him to this world. I shouldn't take any transports. It happens immediately. It's great. It gives us a huge population boost immediately. So this planet can now hold as many as 18. <laughs> That's a lot. More than 10. Alright, recently conquered Ferias. You have no men of Slaw on your world. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to transfer one to Ferias. Oops. Alright. Let's go ahead and buy terraforming. Wow. I spent a lot of money. It is time for me to save my money. Alright, it's election time. Let's see where we are. There is only three races left. This all used to be full. Two votes for the human. Sixteen for the Cylons. Twenty-three votes for the human total. That's still not nearly two-thirds. You can see my population though is growing. Falling behind in sociology. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and save, and we will call this the end of episode 25. There are only three races in the, in the universe now, and um, <laughs> one of them is definitely on the sideline. It is a Cylon human universe. I still call it the moneyverse, though, because Almost everything is predicated on the flow of cash. Our massive trade agreements have basically propelled both of us to power.